monkey. between Samuel Eriksson and Alexandre Budapest. Gabriel Varga versus Edgar Scrivers for the number one contender spot in the lightweight division. First time in karate combat history, we have a belt unification. We have our champion, Joshua Craig versus the interim champion, Rafael Agai. Don't miss KC40, June 24th, Miami, Florida. Fight fans! <laughs> Fans, welcome to the official Karate Combat 40 press conference. KC40 sees the unification bout between reigning champion Josh Koyhagen and interim champion Rafael Agayev. Before we hear from the athletes, we take it to the talent. Starting things off, the world karate champion and president of Karate Combat, Adam Kovacs. <laughs> Next up, the voice heard around the combat sports world. It's our KC play-by-play, -play, Josh Palmer. <laughs> the heart of karate combat, our KC correspondent, Layla Machado Gary. <laughs> with the best. This is the best league in the world, with the best uh, fighters, the best talent, and uh, I'm very honored to be at the same room with uh, these ladies and gentlemen. We've heard rumblings about the third man adding to the commentating crew this Saturday, Luke Rockhold. Confirm, deny, how do we feel about him stepping in? Um, yeah, I reached out to Luke after uh, he was a uh, free agent from the UFC, and I said, probably you should fight in a pit. And he said, I'm interested, let's uh, talk. Then he went on to do that other thing, which uh, we all know how, ended, how it ended. And then, you know, the dog in him came out uh, two days later, after his face was a little bit uh, misplaced. And he said, I want to jump in a pit because I need those gloves. So we're, we're giving him the gloves, but right now he's going to be our guest commentator because I wanted him to fill out the pit from 
the close distance, although he was in 2018 at our very first live show in Miami, he was present and he loved it. But I think since then, the way we evolved and you know where we got since then, I think he's gonna be very surprised. Josh Palmer, Boss Rutten, commentating alongside Luke Rockhold. Thoughts, excitement about that Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've commentated on, on Luke before in some different disciplines and some different promotions. Um, but to actually get to, you know, share a microphone with him and hear his thoughts on, on what goes on in the pit is going to be great. Uh, we're very, very lucky that Karate Combat are always bringing in, you know, these really good guys as the third the third person you know we've had Leo Tomachida GSP Wonderboy we had Hafthor Bjornesson you know the mountain um, so lots of interesting people coming in to give their take uh, on, on uh, what we're doing in the pit and Luke Rockhold's going to be the, the next in line there yeah and it's going to be fun because this guy also loves to joke around you know and everybody knows that we love to joke around so uh, and of course I can see if I can pull him in and see if you can get him for karate combat to fight somebody. Maybe like a Leo de Machida or something. Ooh. We ought to have to see what we can do there. <laughs> Maybe a super match down the line. Yeah, the combat sense. doesn't start or stop Saturday, rather the Kumite on Sunday. Adam, tell us more about that. Yeah. So we're starting a new series of fights. We call it the Kumite. Um, we wanted to do something where we find new talent, new fighters, because you know, like we're doing a certain amount of events per year. And a lot of people want to join the league. We've got thousands of emails coming in. And uh, we wanted to have a platform for them, which is not our professional big show, but have something else. And we created the Kumite, which we're going to shoot first this Sunday, right after the big show. It's not going to be live this time. We're going to do it live to tape. It's going to be um, the first time when we introduce the amateur rule set. Uh, the Kumite will not always be an amateur rule set. You know, we wanted to do something with the Kumite where we explore new ideas, we find talent, we have uh, new people, play by play, and color commentary. Ross Levine is going to be, uh, who is our middleweight champion at uh, the desk there. Um, and I think we don't want to copy anybody, but think about the Contender series, think about the Ultimate Fighter, think about Blood Sport, and think about Cobra Kai, right? So put that together, and you come up with something new, something where you don't copy-paste anybody, but you still have these essences. And I think this really is true to the brand, what we uh, deliver with Karate Combat, you know, with the pit, with the virtual environment, with the fighters we have, um, and we're just going to keep doing that with the Kumite as well. Stars of Tomorrow, built today. Uh, and lastly, Adam, when we think about Karate Combat 40, many are saying that this is the best card yet. Your thoughts overall on that sentiment? Yeah, I'm very, very excited about the card. Um, we've got five reigning or former champion on this card. Uh, the main event is the first ever unification bout in Karate Combat history um, between Joshua Kwehega and Rafael Agaev. Rafael Agaev last December beat Raymond Daniels. That was a huge fight for us, a huge fight for karate and Joshua Quay Hagen being with us forever and he is our welterweight champion but now we've got an interim champion versus the champion now we're gonna see who is the real champion and then we've got Gabriel Varga Edgar Scrivers that's like really the top of the sport uh, Gabriel Varga former uh, Bellator and Glory champion taking on Edgar Scrivers who's a former lightweight karate combat champion then we've got Shahin Atamov former uh, middleweight champion, and we've got other number one contenders at the Bantam, which Jesus Lopez versus Elias Marty. A lot of good fights, and what, one thing I'm very proud of is we're gonna have the first ever Japanese fighter in karate combat history. We've been working on this forever. I'm telling you, when you do fights outside of Japan, it's not easy to get Japanese fighters. When it comes to amateur uh, leagues or the World Karate Federation, then they represent with a national team. That's completely different. But when it comes to pro fighting, it's not easy. But now we're happy to have Yo Miyahara and his debut. And we really want to have more and more Japanese fighters uh, in the league going forward. Uh, this is Mac Tyson from the Mac and Mal Karate Hour. Uh, my first question uh, is for R Robin and also Josh. A lot of you guys have commentated 
a lot of regional shows, even uh, I believe some amateur events. I know Robin was uh, part of the uh, World Combat Games back uh, a while ago. So when you hear that even though the Kumite won't be always amateur fights, this is still, by having this first event, be focused on this amateur rule set. That puts a lot of media attention, a lot of eyes on that rule set. Do you think that this is something that uh, even people that you've worked with, like promotions you've worked in the past, that, that that might be something they're interested in hosting karate fights in the future that are amateur? Yeah, that's a really great question. And yeah, I got to do the World Combat Games and the Pan American Games uh, before. And, and sometimes you need creativity in these kind of rule sets. Like you have to get right into the detail and see what really works and what doesn't. And that's what we will have done here is put, trying to find that little detail that makes it work, makes it exciting for the audience, but makes it real. And uh, the, the cool thing about like what we're seeing, the type of combat that we're seeing in the pit, is you can actually train this without full contact because it's about reaction time. It's about seeing, interpreting, and responding. You know, that's what Agaev does. Agaev literally fights exactly the same as when he fought amateur. He hits harder, but the game is the same. It's a game of his cerebral cortex interpreting what it sees, telling the motor cortex to act faster than the other guy does. It's, a, it's as much a, a game of his brain as it is his body. And you can really do that in amateur fighting. You can really do that with the right amateur rule set, and I think that's what we'll see. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I think uh, a lot of promotions would really love to have is amateur feeding events, not just into specifically their promotion, but into specifically their rule set. Right, it's it's uh, it's all combined under the same banner. They get to train very uh, deliberately and with purpose for that rule set, with the goal of being in that pit. They're not looking to go elsewhere. It's all under the same banner, and I think a lot of uh, promotions would really like to have feeder organizations just specifically for them, and that's what this does, which is is fantastic. Yeah, and I'll add to that too. Imagine the first time you fight your karate combat pro fight, and you've already been in the pit four times. You know, that's gonna make our athletes better. It's gonna make the action better. Yeah, let, let me just add two things. One is how much we're trying to explore things, you know, what works, what doesn't. Uh, I had a phone call with GSP before, and you guys uh, spoke about this as well. He said he believes that the, uh, the five-second rule should be three-second rule. But this was before we created the amateur rule set, so we said, like, okay, like, if he's saying, and you guys were on board with that, that's the right place to test it out. And if it works really well, then, you know, like, we can do things vice versa, so we can implement it into the pro rule set. That's, that's one thing. And the other thing is, the other reason we created it is that now you've got all these amateur organizations around the world and amateur, not promoters, but people organizing these events. And what they usually do is uh, a kata and the kumita tournament, the form and the fighting. But it's always with the rule set of semi-contact, no contact. And we will let everybody use the karate combat amateur rule set to put in their events already. So now they could have a kata, a kumite, and a full contact uh, karate combat rule set. Yeah, can I just add one more thing to that? I mean, it, you know, for people who've been following karate combat for a length of time now, hopefully they realize that karate combat will try new things. If, if there's an idea out there and somebody raises it and it sounds good, we've tried things in the past right and the amateur forum is another way to do that um and there's lots of good examples and obviously on the the karate app at the moment you know token holders can go and vote on hey do we implement this this new extra rule change and you know we've done it with knees we did it with uh, you know various other instances so having yet somewhere else where you can quickly try and iterate out what these rule changes might be um is great yeah It's Alex here, and my first question is for the commentary booth. Boss, you did an interview with Alexander and Samuel Erickson, and Alex brought the idea of doing the first round boxing, the second round kicking only. Do you think he's playing a little bit of mind games, or do you think he's going to stick with that plan? I, I think now they have to go to stick with it, because I interviewed them a couple of weeks ago, and they said they were going to do it, and I thought, you know, that's, that's never gonna happen. 
but they're really sticking to their guns. So I, I truly believe they are going to box the first round. And that was kind of because uh, Erickson was, was training already for a boxing match, and he got pulled out of that, or they got postponed, and then he came to karate combat. So, you know, um, his opponent said, okay, we can do the first round of boxing, and then the second round we do only kicking, and then the third round we go all out. If, of course, it goes to a third round. So I, I truly believe they're going to stick to their guns. We already interviewed a few, one guy from the two, uh, and he said, I, I only hope that I'm not going to be the one who's throwing a kick by accident because it's so natural to make a punch combination and follow it up with a kick. So I hope I don't break that rule because then immediately, of course, goes to the karate combat rules. Anything to add, Josh? No, I mean, I think it's a, it's a unique approach. Um, if they, <laughs> very much so, uh, if they can stick to it, look, it could be a lot of fun. Um, but as Bas said, you know, we'll see when it, comes down to it you know um who knows who knows but i'm, I'm all for giving it a go <laughs> i find those, these things super interesting because like as it is fighting is, is a certain amount of agreement we agree what we can do this is in the rules we agree what we cannot do you start adding these other things these are entirely unwritten fabricated nonsense really that if we agree to do it we can get the audience interested we can play games with it but no such rule exists you can kick that man in the head in round one if you want to right and so i find these things really fascinating because why would you tell your opponent the truth right why would you it makes no sense so i suspect somebody will kick somebody in the head in round one i hope they do because it is illogical to make an agreement with your opponent in my opinion it well, makes it more fun, though, because it's like, are they just playing games with each other? Are they not? Do we think less of the fighter who doesn't stick to that rule that they said online? But what they said online isn't really part of what we agreed in the first place. All of it means we're talking about it, too, yeah. which shows how clever they are. Um, yeah, I'm dying to see who kicks first. Well, I, I, I was uh, preparing for um, um, to, to fight Kevin Rendleman for the UFC title, and the day before the fight, he stepped into my elevator. We were with the two of us, and the door closes, and it's, it's shiny. We, I can see his face. Yeah, we both had a smirk on our face. And then suddenly he says, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great, bud. And he goes, hey, if you promise to keep your feet on the ground today, I promise you I won't take you down. I go, serious? I go, okay, let me think about that thing. But then when we're in the fight, the first thing he does is like, kick me, he said. So he kind of confused me there. <laughs> and then the, the game plan went out of the water because, of course, I started kicking right away. But you see, so that we're going to see if they can keep themselves to that rule. It's it a will great, be fun. It's a great balance of, like, trust and desire to win. Yep. But then also defensively, you know, if, if you're getting punched in the face, you're probably going to try another technique. Um, it'll, yeah, I'm thrilled to see who kicks first in that first round, if at all. And if not, how it's going to go down when we get to the third round, which they promised would be just pure technical. So, yeah. I, I, I find the kicking round is going to be the greatest, I think, because both of them are extremely well kickers. kickers. Yeah. So that, if it goes to the second round, that will be freaking awesome. Somebody's kicking somebody in round one, for sure. Or I'll be angry, <laughs> at, <laughs> I'll be angry at both of them. <laughs> if the only... If the only consequence of, of doing something is the audience will be mad at you, you should always take that consequence if it will give you an advantage in combat. The audience's response is none of your business. The fight is what matters. If neither one of those guys tries to kick the other in the head in round one, I'll be very angry at both. And quick question for Layla, the queen of storytelling. What have you been picking up on the energy of fight night? What stories are really standing out to you? Today's my favorite day because we're interviewing the fighters backstage as they are going through their weight cut. And as you go through your weight cut and you start to dehydrate, you're kind of essentially at the weakest point they can be, the most vulnerable point in a fighter's week. And we're asking them, you know, to show us their ego, to show us their game plan, to talk to us about what their plans are. And it's so interesting the way they say things, not always what they say, but the way they say things. We're reading them to see you know, how confident are they going into this fight? How confident are they going into this battle? Um, so this is one of my favorite periods to understand them. What I'm most excited about right now has to be Agaev stand down. Last time we saw him, he shocked the world. Quite frankly, everyone, not everyone, but almost everyone was clearly thinking Daniels was going to win that fight. He showed how precious and powerful karate can be when you plan it properly. He really elevated karate and just entertained us no end. We've, I've never heard the room scream quite so loud. Agaev is who I'm most excited about. And then he came into our room today 
obviously going through his weight cut process today with that same calm, quiet, composed confidence that he did prior to Daniel's. Um, so, you know, he's in that fighting spirit. He refused to answer questions like he always does. I'm not gonna tell you my game plan. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing. And every element of him is just mysterious and brilliant. So yeah, Agaev. What's up guys, Dylan Rush here. I'm just gonna keep it to one question for Adam. Adam, we have finally made it. We have reached the 40th event in karate combat yeah. history. Do you <laughs> Do you feel like the promotion has improved its overall, overall product with each event that has passed? And at this current juncture, would you say that karate combat is more entertaining, more competitive, and simply better than it's ever been? 100%. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank all of our talent here today. Boss Rutten, Josh Palmer, Adam Kovach, Layla Machado, Gary, and Robin Black. We're going to bring up our first group of athletes here in just a moment. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, remember to head to the Karate app and use your tokens, make your picks, participate in all of the different rule changes. There is no organization where the fans have more power. At the far sides here between Maximo Nunez and Damian Villa. Closest to the podium, social media superstars Samuel Erickson and the Frenchman himself, Alexander Buderbain. Starting things off with Samuel, we think about an opponent here who similarly has a lot of a following, a lot of hype behind him. What do you make of Buderbain? Um, I see him as a great athlete and a great fighter. And that's why I chose to uh, take this fight, accept his challenge on social media, and move up a weight class to, uh, to face him. So, yeah, I have respect for him. Buderbain, when you visualize this fight Saturday, what's the outcome that comes to mind? When I visualize the combat, I think it's going to be a combat très serré, ça va être euh, en même temps un combat où il y aura beaucoup beaucoup de coups et évidemment j'espère gagner. When he visualize this fight, 
uh, he see this fight like a very hard fight with a lot of punch, a lot of uh, very tight fights, and he hopes that he will win it. Maximo Apex Nunez, Dominican State Karate Championship, coming off of a loss to Gabriel Stankunis at KC37. What's changed in the time off? Um, for this camp, I've changed everything. Uh, I have great people around me, great corner, great family, great coaches. And, uh, you know, last time I fought and, you know, I fought this fight, even though the, you know, the stats show that I won the fight and I felt like there should be a fourth round where I was probably going to crucify, crucify him. Um, but he went his way. He worked hard for it. So, you know, I uh, respect for him. Um, but for this one, I have nothing that's holding me back emotionally and physically. I'm 100% ready to go. And, and Saturday, uh, you guys are going to see uh, uh, Storm in, in Florida and in Miami and not fit Saturday. We take it to the Olympic qualifier, his opponent, Damien Super Villa. Damien, similarly, looking to bounce back from a setback in April of this year. What's changed? How are you different? Yeah, so my last fight, really close. I mean, like uh, a lot of people would uh, would have gone either way with it. It went a fourth round. I felt that fourth round was mine. Split decision loss. It's okay. Um, I've uh, adjusted a lot of things. Adjusted my shorter distance. I've adjusted my pace. So uh, didn't stop training from from April to now. And yeah, I mean, we're gonna start that show off. Uh, we're gonna start that show off right on Saturday. A banger to start. Get that win, and then just enjoy the rest of the fights. What's up, guys? Dylan Rush here. I have one for Samuel and Alexander. Uh, Samuel, you wrote on Instagram today, my opponent says he's a better athlete than me because he's more shredded, but muscles don't win fights. How much of a factor do you think your speed will play in this one? Do you think Booter Bane will be able to keep up with your lightning quick strikes? Yeah, I just heard him say that. I heard that in an inter interview that he said I was a, he didn't say he was a better athlete. He said I was a he was, a, yeah, he said basically he's a better athlete than me because he's in better shape. Um, and I was like, yeah, um, I mean, that doesn't really matter. He is more shredded than me, and I'm the one moving up. So obviously I need to put on weight to even make this fight. So, but I don't really make uh, too much of that statement. I mean, if he thinks good looks and, and, and abs will win this fight, I mean, that's fine. Um, but uh, I just feel that watching his fights. Uh, I feel that he has a great, uh, great pace. He is quick, he is explosive, but not after the first round. So that's where I think I will be able to uh, um, be better than him, even if I'm moving up a weight class and uh, is uh, a little bit fatter than mm -hmm. him. So yeah. And then this one's for Bruderbane. Another thing I saw on social media today that uh, Samuel was trying to get a work in and in the workout room, you were trying to throw him off his game a little bit. Do you think you would distract him a little bit or do you think he was able to stay focused? Euh, je pense que Samuel, il pense beaucoup à moi depuis, depuis qu'il a accepté mon challenge. <rire> Donc dans la salle de sport, euh, je pense qu'il a été distrait. Et il a même souri, il a même rougi. <rire> Mais je suis là pour combattre. Et euh, tout ce qu'il a dit juste avant, je l'entends. Et on, vraiment, on verra samedi qui c'est qui va gagner. Il y a quelque chose que, bien sûr, Samuel est only thinking about him every single time since then he knows that he will fight him. So of course he was distracted and uh, even his face went red. So we will see on Saturday fights. My face went red because I was shooting content with Karate Combat guys for like three hours on South Beach on the Monday and I come from Sweden. We don't have, a, <laughs> we don't have sun bro. So that's why I was red, not because he's Standing almost naked. I just want to point that out. I, I'm just seeing a lot of things where I don't want this fight to end up like a bro fight. You know, we had this at the last event where, you know, guys just played around. So I hope you guys don't get too close on fight week. But on the, on the night of the fight, you guys going to do what you need to do. How you doing, Mallory Woods? Uh, I respect uh, Samuel, but uh, it's not my friend. Already, it's not my friend. That's that's something to follow up. This I'm Mallory Lewis from Macamal uh, podcast. I have a question for Damien and Maximo. 
Uh, both the gentlemen are coming off losses from the last fight, but you're both described as counterfighters. Uh, Maximo, to you first, who's going to lead the dance? Are you going to step, step back and wait to be a counterfighter? And the same question to Damien. You know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go in there to score points. Um, you guys saw in my last fight. Uh, first of all, I had the, big, the biggest crowd in a prelim fight ever in karate combat. There was no place for nobody else in that crowd. And then the fact that I went in there, you know, first time in my life I've been dropped ever. Um, and, you know, I came back as strong like a zombie, and I punched him and rocked him right back and lead the dance for the whole rest of the fight. Um, you tell me what's going to happen. You know, which I don't I don't really use words. I just go in there and, you know, and use my weapons for damage. And that way people will see what I'm about. Well, Damien, with that response, does that play right into your to your game plan? Yeah, of course. I mean, first of all, the crowd, that's going to hype me up. I'm not I'm not going to be hearing Maximo, Maximo. I'm going to be hearing yeah. Mexico. You're going to love you're going to love hearing people you know? saying Maximo because so that's the name you're going to hear in the crowd. Be, it's going to pump me up. It's going to pump me up. I'm just going to be in there, you know, to do my thing again. I've watched him. He's watched me. I think he's a great, uh, a great athlete. I have. Um, I'm here to fight. I'm here to fight martial artists. I'm not here to fight like street brawlers or thugs. He's a martial artist. I'm a martial artist. We're gonna put on a show, and there's gonna be fireworks. That's it. You know, we'll show it there. Yeah, Damon has accomplished a Mexico. lot. Mexico. Uh, he's accomplished a lot, and he has a long a list of uh, you know taekwondo career. But at the end of the day, karate combat it says it all. Karate combat is a mix of talent and mix of art. So if you, you know, if you come in there and just use one, you're always gonna struggle. So Damien has accomplished a lot, and you know, like me, I will go in there and not just show my karate and taekwondo skills, but also my boxing skills. We'll show the mix on Saturday, both of us. Let's go, baby, Maximo all the way. Perfect. Steven here with uh, Eat Up Entertainment and Fighting Yo. I just have a question for both Samuel and Alexander. Uh, first question is for Samuel. So your fight against Tarek Khalif, you unfortunately ended uh, an injury for you know for both fighters, and we did see a KO coming uh, in all our eyes. Do you feel like we we will see a KO this Saturday? Um, you know I don't really like to put out my predictions, but uh, like that. But um, all I can say is I feel that especially my boxing is better than his. Um, and also, when I've been looking at his fights, I also feel that his boxing is the is one of his hole, holes where I can uh, use my boxing. And uh, I think if there is a KO slash TKO, it will come from punches. That's all I can say. But I, I don't want to predict in like first round, second round, third round. You know, um, I know some fighters like to do that. I know the fans like it, but. Uh, I just, uh, all I can say is I will show up ready and I will uh, do my best to, to win the fight. And if that ends up winning in the first round or the third round or the fourth round or whatever, that will, we will see. Excellent, thank you. Just one more question. So um, you've been named as very talented by the likes of Joe Rogan and you know, you've gained the attention of people like uh, John Jones. Do you think you've lived up to the name of the, of the hype? Um, I think after my last fight, I think a lot of people changed their mind. Uh, I have noticed that uh, the tone on my social media and also like the, the reach of my content has, um, it's been reshared by more like legit uh, profiles and pages. Like ESPN was uh, sharing, you know, that clip when, when I uh, was uh, getting a knockdown on Tarek. And you know, with that, a lot of like UFC people started to follow me actually even DM'd me um, and said, great work, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think that I, uh, I proved myself a lot more uh, after my second fight than my first fight. So hopefully I can just, you know, uh, keep doing that. Uh, I put in a lot of work when I train for the fights. People just think I'm jumping around on social media doing Superman push-ups, but I do that too. But that's for content. Cool. So. Um, I just try to separate the content and the training for that, you know, more for show. Um, and once I go uh, into a fight camp, obviously I'm not doing Superman push-ups all the time. Absolutely. So yeah, I just do my best to live up to the, you know, to the positive feedback I get from, from big profiles and people and just try to do my best. 
Absolutely, thank you. And then just one last question is uh, for Alexander, please. So you did mention uh, in a post in response to uh, Samuel's challenge that if he lost, uh, you wanted his contract back. What exactly did you mean by that? Quand j'ai parlé de contrat avec, euh, sur ma vidéo par rapport à Samuel, c'est parce qu'il m'a dit que si je perdais son combat, donc si je perdais ce combat, je devais arrêter Karaté Combat. Donc je lui ai renvoyé la balle en lui disant que si c'est moi qui gagnais, c'est moi qui récupérais son contrat de deux ans qui vient de signer. So, when Alexandre said that, it's because Samuel said, if Alexandre is not winning this fight, if he's losing this fight, he needs to stop Karaté Combat. So, because um, because he said that so Alexandre said you need to give me my, your contract and uh, put the, the contract back if you if you lose and that's it I get what he means I, I said in my video my response video that he has a record of two and three and he comes from a loss and that loss was al uh, almost two years ago so if he loses to me again he has a record of two and four with two straight losses and a negative record and did not fight for two years. So I'm just said, I just said that that might be your contract because maybe Adam and Andres don't want to get you fights anymore if you're not fighting, but when you're fighting, you're losing. So that was just, uh, you know, just a response to, to his uh, challenge. Um, so, but I get what he's saying. He want, either he wants Karate Combat to strip my contract or he actually wants my contract. That's what I understood. Yeah, so I mean, he wants both his contract. Are, you know, both might be legit. I mean, <laughs> if he wants me. my contract, that's, that's, I understand. My contract is good. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Abby Wagner from the Fight Space. That actually leads really well into my first question for Alexandra. You're coming off of a reasonably long layoff. Do you think ring or rather pit rust will affect you at all? Or have you stayed active outside of fighting since last we saw you? Oui, ça fait deux ans que j'ai pas combattu et j'attendais ça depuis, depuis deux ans. Donc je me suis entraîné pendant deux ans et il y a eu des pertes de motivation et des regains de motivation. Euh, donc ça a été compliqué quand même pendant les entraînements de garder cette motivation pour tout le temps, tout le temps, tout le temps m'entraîner, faire mieux. J'ai eu des bons sparring partners euh, et je vous dis, ça fait bien deux mois depuis que je suis au courant que je vais combattre avec Samuel, que je suis hyper excité d'être là. Et pour moi, Karaté Combat, c'est ma maison, c'est comme ma famille. Donc ça sera toujours stressant de rentrer dans le pit, <laughs> mais je suis excité à chaque fois de venir. So of course it's been two years uh, since his last fast fight, so it was very hard for him. Uh, he worked out very hard uh, during two years, but without any objectives, without any goals, it was a bit um, confusing for him, a bit uh, um, hard for his mind. But obviously, he keep he keep his mind uh, focused on the fight, and uh, since he knows that he will fight uh, since two months, he put all his uh, uh, he, he did his best to be on shape, and now he is the best of himself. Merci beaucoup. Uh, this question is for Maximo, and it comes from my co-host Ruben Marvelous Vargas. Maximo, it's good to see you returning to the pit. You train with a really tough group of guys out at American Top Team Longwood. Can you tell us a little bit about how your team has helped you specifically with a game plan for this next challenge? So for this, for this, um, uh, for Damien, basically, I'm not gonna figure your talk about around. For Damien, we had. Um, three uh, uh, Taekwondo specialists come into the gym three times a week. And then when we're, they were not at the gym, we went to uh, a karate school. And then, you know, the rest of it was conditioning. And basically, uh, this camp, I'm pretty sure, you know, um, whatever they did to me in the gym, Damien is not going to do it to me once, uh, you know, once we get in the pit. Uh, it's one thing when you can do whatever you want in the gym. When everybody's your friend and everybody's there's no pressure, but when you get in the pit and somebody's willing to punch you in the face, it's way different. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna do you know what he has to do. Uh, he's he's an athlete. He's he's a star, and um, I'm I'm ready to eat the kick and and close that distance and punch him in the face. Cake shall be eaten Saturday night. Expectations are high for our second group of athletes. We thank you for the time as we bring in our third.
We take it to the face-offs with Adam Kovach. Highly touted bantamweights, Maximo Apex Nunez and Damian Super Villa. Maximo, Maximo, Maximo, Mexico. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> Got it. Samir, remember, you, you are white belt in karate. I am black belt for the good. Social media superstars Samuel Erickson and the returning Alexandre Flash Booterbane. Can't miss fights this Saturday at KC40. We now bring in our third group of athletes. Once again, make sure to download the Red Combat app. Use your tokens accordingly. No organization gives the fans more power. Our third group of athletes on the far side, all the way from Canada, he is a six-time world champion in kickboxing from Bellator and Glory. It's Gabriel Varga. His opponent, the first champion in karate combat history from Latvia, Edgars, the Bear Slayer Scrivers. And in our main event of the evening, a unification bout from Azerbaijan, Raphael, the Panther Agaev. He takes on the champion from the United States of America, Josh, the Preacher, Quay Hagen. We start things off with the champion, Josh Quay Hagen. What do you make of the interim title capturing performance from Rafael Agaia? 
Um, I was just like the rest of the world. I was pretty entertained, and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was just a beautiful performance, um, and it was exactly what, what we all expected from Agayef, you know, him to be um, the, the, the giant killer that he is, just basically uh, knows anything he sets his mind to. He's going to give it a good run, and he's going to uh, do his best to accomplish it, and I was super impressed. I, I enjoyed to watch it as a fan, and now I'm excited to get punched in the face by him. For Rafael Agayev, how is Josh Quayhagen different from Raymond Daniels? Evet. Evet. Allah hamdun salam diram. Joshua ile Raymond'in farkı odur ki Joshua yakın mesafeden ellerine işte mesnunni verir. Raymond ise uzak mesafeden ayaklarına ayrı ayrı taktikalara sahipler. Herkesine hürmet edirəm. Ee, Raymond'da da, Joshua'da, Hayat'da ve İdman Kariyası'nda uğurlar arzu edirəm. First of all, let me greet everybody. Hi. Uh, the difference between uh, Raymond Daniels and Joshua is that uh, Raymond Daniels, he uh, prefers to use his uh, legs and kicks uh, from the distance and uh, Joshua is using more uh, punches from the close distance. Uh, I respect them both and uh, I uh, really uh, wish them the best in their life and career. We take it to the Bear Slayer, Edgar Scrivers. When you think about Gabriel Varga stacking him up against the other opponents you faced here in karate combat, where does he land? Well, he's a great fighter, a good kickboxer with a lot of uh, championships. And uh, this is not the number one contender spot. This is the fight for the championship. When you reflect on your defeat to Luis Roca, how do you think that that rematch would go? I'm not thinking about that fight. In my mind, uh, is only now Gabriel. And I'm fo focusing only on him. Gabriel Varga, glory experience, Bellator experience, karate combat now. How does it feel? It's good. It's good. Like I said, after the first fight, this uh, this feels like home. The other spots were really good for me, and I was happy to build up my resume, but this is where I want to be now. Third appearance here in the pit. Do you think that Edgar Scrivers is the best opponent for you right now? Oh, he's he's the, the best in the division. I, I have no doubt that uh, I think, at least in a rematch, he's the champion. I have so much respect for him. Lots of respect for the champion as well, but I think uh, Screevers is a great fighter. We take it to league president Adam. History being made. First unification bout this main event. Fireworks expected. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I, we're a young organization, so I like to say this is the first time in the history of the league. Uh, but it's always true, you know, like we never had two champions, two great champions fight each other at the same division. Obviously, we had Joshua Quayhagen fight Luis at the super fight before, which was an amazing fight. Uh, but, you know, like nobody ever beat Joshua Quayhagen at this division, division since he's a champion. Uh, but now he's got a big challenge with interim champion Rafael Agayev, who just beat Raymond Daniels. But when <coughs> the reason why the interim championship happened, because Josh was injured, and I called him up and said, like, listen, we've got a fight going on, most probably between Raymond and Rafael, and we would like to have this as, a, as an interim championships because, you know, you've been out for a little bit, uh, and whenever you're back, you're going to fight the winner. And uh, he said, I love it. I don't know if these were the exact words, but he said, like, this is even better this is better for the league, this is better for all of us, and I'm very, very honored to face any of them. So this is, this is a big deal for us. Thank you very much. So the Abby Wagner again from the, the Fight Space. Space. Question, Question for, for the main, main event now. Uh, we've said a couple of times now that this is a marquee event, this is a, a huge deal for Karate Combat. How does it feel to be part of that main event? Um, I'm excited. I, I think you know if if you know karate, you know Agayev, and so you're you're a fan of him you're, as as a person, as a martial artist, as a competitor. And so um, this is kind of what I, I I've always this is why I got into karate combat. So what I wanted to do is to fight the best, and uh, he is the best. So to be honest, I'm just a kid in a candy store. I, I'm I'm loving being here. I'm loving uh, 
uh, the whole whole experience. So I'm pretty excited about it, and you know I get the best seat in the house. And Raphael. Oh, uh, how does it feel to be a part of this main event, being such a, a large marquee event? البته که بودش منم تند داد زور شوخی تند داد تو خواهد بود داشت. هیچکس برا نشکت سخت می‌نن و این ماجرا جالب. حال حاضر دا من دوش چوش نمی‌شم. ازمی یخشی سلیم. دوش یکی از سال را لذت. هر چی یعنی منم تو خدانش مگم نان زور شانم تو خدانش مگی نان. هر چی بیت می‌ر. یکی از سال را هر چی بالا لذت. سال. This is a uh, really uh, important fight for both of us, I believe, uh, as for myself and Joshua as well. And we can talk for hours about this, we can share our thoughts, but uh, everything is going to be shown uh, in two days. And uh, uh, what I'm um, completely uh, in now is that fight. These are my thoughts are all in that fight, upcoming fight, that's it. Thank you very much. This is a question now for Gabriel Varga. You stated in your post-fight interview at KC37 that you wanted one more fight before potentially calling for the title. Can we expect a call out from you should you be victorious this Saturday? Um, I'm just thinking about this fight. I don't really go beyond that ever. There's no point in thinking about pa or future fights if you don't deal with the one at hand. So that's my focus right here. Laser focused. This yes, is sir. the championship fight. Whoever wins this fight is going to be the champion. Yeah, Luis might have different thoughts, but I want to chime in on this one because uh, this, this wasn't easy to make, honestly, because, uh, you know, timing-wise, uh, things didn't line up and then, uh, you know, like, took some time to convince, not because they didn't want to fight each other, but as I said, you know, things, uh, the cards showed something different and, you know, we worked really, really hard and I think the guys can, can uh, say the same to, to make this happen because... Personally, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this fight. You know, I wanted this fight to happen. And I think, you know, when we knew that uh, the Luis Scrivers 3 didn't happen because of timing issues, um, then this was the fight to make. These are the best guys in the divisions, in the division. So, you know, like I think for us, our job is to entertain. Our job is to put the best possible fights together and you know like this was also the pitch for them or to them is is like we need this fight because you guys are the best we do have a champion and somebody needs to fight that champion and there's no doubt about you know hopefully nothing happens injury wise that the winner of this fight is going to fight Luis Rocha Last question. This is a question for Edgar Screevers. You're the only rostered karateka from Latvia within karate combat. Does your country have its eyes on you this coming Saturday? Well, first of all, I'm not the only fighter. Uh, there's another fighter from Latvia, and uh, after that, there's going to be another guy from my team from Screevers Karate fighting on the amateur karate combat kumite tournament. So, and uh, of course, Latvia is behind me and uh, my team, so they're going to be watching. Hey Adam, uh, this is Mallory with some sport martial arts. I have a question for you as all these fighters are focused on their opponents and you've already mentioned that the winner between these two gentlemen will face Louise, but what about for welterweight? Do you have a dance partner lined up after we unify the belts on Saturday? I would like to just echo them. Is now we're focused on this fight. Uh, we've got a few options, you know, like we've got a few ideas, but uh, you know, we just wanna, we don't wanna go that much uh, further right now because the division is is is, uh, is strong we've got really really good guys really good newcomers as well so I can't confirm anything there as I could confirm with the lightweights but I think you know like this this fight is gonna gonna be fireworks it's gonna be a banger and then you know after that we're gonna see what makes the most sense what's up guys Dylan Rush here this one's for Rafael Agaev uh, the martial arts scene in Azerbaijan has been growing at a rapid pace as of late, largely due to guys like Nazim Sadikov, Rafael Faziv, and Tofik Musayev. What does it mean to you to be able to represent Azerbaijan within the realm of martial arts and within karate combat? Yeah, 
çəkdiyin atlar dünyada tanınmış idmançılardandır və onu demək istəyirəm ki, karate kombat mənim üçün çox böyük bir təşkilatdır və burada olduğumdan qürur duyuram və mənim karate kombata gəlməyimdən ilk məqsədim buranın çempionluğu bu kəməri qazanmaqdır və mən o çəkdiyin idmançılarla Tofiq Musayevlə Tural Rəqimov və digər idmançılarla bir yerdə məşq edirəm və onların hamısı bu günləri mayəmdədir. Onlar mənə dəstək olmağa gələcəklər. The names that you have mentioned, they are pretty known in the world of martial arts. They are my friends and we do make sparring together. We know each other very well. They are going to come here to watch my fight as well. Um, they are all in, in Miami now. And um, uh, what it means uh, for me to come to Karate Combat and fight here, it means a lot to me because since the day one I came, uh, my goal is uh, to become a champion in Karate Combat. Steven here with uh, EatUp Entertainment and FightingYo.com. I uh, just have a question, f well, two questions for Mr. Koi Hagen. Um, do, you, do you think you've reached your prime and how, much, how many more fights do you think will be seen from you in the Kari Combat Ring? And before you retire, is there anybody that you've wanted to always fight? Um, kind of echo the, the, the panel here, man. Uh, right now, this is the only fight I'm thinking about. Um, I believe I'm in my prime right now. I believe this is the best I've ever been. Um, so. Uh, as for the future, I'm not real sure. I know that right now uh, I got enough to, to focus on, and right now I'm, this is the only fight I'm excited about. But I, as Adam mentioned, the, the division is heating up. It's an exciting division to be in, you know, to be the welterweight the champ and to be the target. Um, and so I, I, like, I, like, I like the division being high. I like to have all these killers in here, you know, so it's exciting. But right now I got, I got the big dog right now, uh, so that's the only focus. Absolutely, and for Mr. Agayev, you seem very focused, very relaxed, but would you consider this your toughest fight yet? Eğer bir idmançı da stresli yoktursa, o profesyonel idmançı değil, bu yanlıştır. Sadəcə olaraq, insanlar ayrı-ayrı xarakterlərdə olurlar. Mənim də sakit olmağım, bu mənim xarakterimdir. Və mən bu döyüşdən ilk növbədə kombat karateya, sonra Joshua'ya çox sol deyirəm ki, bu döyüşü biz yerinə getirəcəyik və mənə gəlir ki, iki profesional idmançıdan biri qalib gəlməlidir. Bu, idmanın qaydasıdır və həyatın qanunudur. Və düşünürəm ki, kim güclüdürsə, o da qalib gəlsin və Joshua'ya ancaq hörmətlə yanaşmışam. Buradan qalib olaramsa və yaxud məqlubiyyət olarsa, yenə də hörmət bəsləyəcəm. Çünki karate bizə bir-birimizi sevməyə öyrədir. I am actually pretty excited and not nervous, but really excited about this fight. It may not seem like that, but it's mostly when you are a professional athlete, every professional athlete experiences that, but I might not show it so much. I am really excited and I want to thank Karate Combat for making it possible to have a fight with uh, Joshua. I have uh, great respect for him. And no matter what outcome of this fight is going to be, it will always stay that way. I do have respect for my op opponent. Thank you. So my question was for Josh Quayhagen. It was mentioned on Dane Curley's live with uh, odds maker Nick Kalikas that Rafael Agaev was a minus 700 favorite for this fight. What are your thoughts on that, and does that motivate you as the champion? Um, I mean, I, right on with the stats, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like That's where I like to live, you know, right there is that underdog, you know. I, I like the, the Rocky Balboa of Karate Combat moniker, you know, and uh, I feel like he always had bad, probably bad betting stats. Of course, he's a fictional character, but um, it, it makes no I'm, – I'm motivated because I, I, I was the underdog from the beginning, 
uh, what, no matter who says what, no matter what the stats were, if they said the opposite, uh, I, w I would say that I'm still the underdog. Everybody knows what's up. Um, so that's where I like to live. I'm, I'm pumped about it. It's just kind of, um, that's the reason why, but the, that guy saying that thing didn't make any difference in my excitement. Hey, Joshua. Um, in combat sports, a lot of the champions, if there's an interim champion, will refer to the interim champion as being a, a fake belt. Is that your consideration for this fight? So the way I look at it is there's no belt. You know, if you fight for the belt each time. So, yeah, we, we, we both got one. He won an amazing fight. He's, he's a champion. There's no question about that. He is a champion. Um, but the, the, I'm not – who's the champion? Whoever wins Saturday is the champion. That's the only thing that matters. There's no – I don't think there is a champion. We're going to fight for it, you know, and then at the end, that's who decides what the champion is. Uh, all the belts, you know, I'm kind of indifferent about all that. Who's the champ? Who's the, the identity of it? I just – I really love the battle. I love the test. I love to – to, to step in there and, and, and do some amazing things and try to overcome a lot of things, you know. Um, so I, I just love what it makes me become. I love I love this matchup, and I'm excited about who's going to be the champion. And then, Joshua, as well, um, before coming to Karate Combat, you were very focused in mixed martial arts. Um, for Rafael Agaev, he takes somewhat as a, of a, a very kind of shut down and close, even a wrestling style in Karate Combat. With your, with your MMA background and your bit of uh, kind of experience in that field, do you feel like you, it's a good matchup for you? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, if, I think if you study IGF, you maybe it's hard to say he's a good matchup for anybody. You know, he's been the hardest guy to hit. He's got he controls range so good. Obviously, everybody knows his, his, his pedigree. He's so good at everything. So uh, I love the matchup because it's hard. It's going to be a Rubik's Cube. It's going to be a chess match. So, um, I, yeah, I think it's a great matchup for me because he's the best fighter in the world. Hi, uh, Gabrielle Haynes here, at Gabrielle Haynes on Twitter.com. Uh, Mr. Scrivers, you've been awfully interested in your phone. Uh, who's the last person to slide into your DMs? It's none of your business. All right, thank you. And with that, let's square these athletes off. History being made in the main event, the unification between Josh Quayhagen and Rafael Agaya, and a feature fight at lightweight between Gabriel Varga and Edgar Scrivers. The Canadian Gabriel Varga and Edgar's the Bear Slayer Scrivers. In our number one contenders match. And in our main event, the unification at welterweight between interim champion Rafael Agaev and Josh Quehe. Let's see some heat, boys. This is for the belt. The Panther versus the Preacher. Quehagen Agaev. Voting is open for Karate Combat 40. Head to the app and make your picks now. All the athletes will be available for media following this press conference. Wait, Scott. KC40, June 24, live from Miami, Florida. And oh, big right hand from Samuel Erickson. A welterweight clash between Samuel Erickson and Alexandra Budabank. Gabriel Varga versus Edgar Scrivers for the number one contender spot in the lightweight division. First time in karate combat history, we have a belt unification. We have our champion, Joshua Quayhegan, versus the interim champion, Rafael Agar. Don't miss KC40, June 24th, Miami, Florida.